pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> John, could you assist in taking roll call? Yes. I have to figure. Donna, would you just help me? I, have, I still have fo oh. trouble focusing my eyes here. So sure. The print is really small. I did bring my glasses. <coughs> I should have brought my cheaters. No, I'm fine. I can model too, but I think I got it figured out. Like to Jamie? Present. Clark? Here. John? Here. And then it's Jason? Yep. Here. Alicia? Here. And Donna? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, I'll, next, I'll take a motion to, pr to approve tonight's agenda, and we also have an addendum tonight as well. So moved. Sorry, was that Clark? Clark. I have a motion by Clark and a second by John. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, action carries. Um, announcements, next school board meeting, uh, the next regular school board meeting will be on Monday, April 8th, 2024, at 6 p.m. in the GSL High School Community Room, 443-444. Um, acknowledgements. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge our Knowledge Bowl <coughs> team. They qualified once again for the state tournament. And uh, we wish them nothing but the best when they go up to Craigens. I believe it's in the middle of April when they'll be going up there for the state. Uh, and then also just uh, congratulations to all of the activities and things like that from the winter season. We've wrapped that up officially here yesterday. And um, you know, besides the Knowledge Bowl team coming in, most of the activities are winding down. And, and the start of spring sports and spring activities is here. Thank you. Any additional acknowledgments? Okay. Um, first call for public input relating to the agenda. And second call for public input relating to the agenda. And third call for public input relating to the agenda. Okay. And we don't have any reports or presentations tonight, so we'll move on to the administrators and committee reports. Uh, business manager's report, would you like to start us off, Michelle? Yep, thanks, Alicia. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of things I'll touch on. Uh, some of my items are part of the agenda as well. We did hold a finance meeting last week. Uh, we had a good discussion about a number of different topics. We kind of reviewed our fund balance and where we ended last year and where we're sitting this year in our projection for FY25. And so far those numbers are looking um, uh, healthy for us. We're still trying to stick with that 20% to follow our, our fund balance policy. So I'll continue to work on those numbers over the next couple months before it comes to the board for approval in June. At this time, there's no big budget reductions that we are recommending that we need to make from a finance committee standpoint. If you've kind of watched in the news, there's a number of districts now that you see that are starting to make a lot of budget reductions. And kind of what we went through last year when we said when the ESSER money was running out, the federal money was running out, we're going to hit that cliff. And that's kind of what happened to us with the, uh, the enrollment and the money running out. And now that's what's happening to a lot of districts this year. We were just a little more aggressive in how we used our money compared to the, some of the districts that um, scaled theirs back. It all has to be used by this, uh, the end of this year. Uh, enrollment numbers are projected to drop again for next year, so we are watching that as long as in, along with all our different class sizes and what we have. One of the biggest changes that I shared with the committee is the cost, the increased cost of um, custodial items, all our supplies that we use, all our classroom supplies. Right now when I compared numbers, our custodial costs this year compared to last year is up 73%. And this is your basic paper towels, toilet paper, all the things that they need for cleaning. That's where we're seeing a lot of our increases along with classroom supplies. Um, kind of this, similar to what you see when you go in the grocery store yourself, all those things that have, the, you know, the, the cost of living has just really affected all those, um, those type of supplies things. Um, we took a look at some of the assumptions that I've been using. Of course, we'll know what happens with our legislation come May. We don't really anticipate any additional funding coming through with next year. They're trying to 
um, clean up a little bit of the bills regarding the READ Act, uh, the personnel support aid, those type of things, the SRO, those are language items that they're working on right now. We do have a few contracts that, you have, that will expire June 30th that uh, the board members are working on, so we're working on that as well. Um, letters training is, of course, a big topic, and that's going to use up quite a bit of our professional development budget um, to get that all put in place. And then another big item that I want to bring up just a little bit briefly, the information I've gotten uh, is related to property insurance. I've met with our agent um, once and started filling out all the applications again. They said to expect about an 18 to 20 percent increase in property insurance coverage and also to be aware there's going to be some big changes coming down the road regarding deductibles on our property insurance probably won't happen for this next year but within a couple of years the deductibles are you're no longer going to be able to get by with a ten thousand dollar deductible anymore probably for next year we're for sure going to have to change to a twenty five thousand dollar deductible going forward they're they are going to start basing their your deductible on the property value of your building so right now if you, our buildings are uh, valued at about 120 million overall so that would mean your deductible is 1.2 million so it's no longer going to be effective to have if you have a claim for fifty thousand dollars say you had damage in one of your buildings or you know to that effect you're just going to have to write the check for it because there's not going to be insurance coverage for it so a lot more to come on that. Also, uh, the roof coverage is going to change drastically. There's going to be a lot less coverage on roofs just because insurance companies have dealt with so much wind, hail damage that they can't keep up with the cost of the repairs anymore. So about every $1 that we pay in premium, it's costing them about $1.30. So they just can't keep up with uh, what they're collecting anymore. So they're looking at some drastic changes to insurance coverage. And they also said eventually this is going to float down to us as residential people. So um, just something to stay on top of to be aware of, but it's going to take another bite into our budget just to cover um, insurance. Uh, health insurance, we uh, opened our first round of our HIDA bids for health insurance. We had two members of the union present. We did it visually or virtually. And we right away went after a second and best final bid, and those are due uh, this Thursday. So after that, we have a health insurance meeting scheduled for next Wednesday with the committee, <coughs> and we'll be reviewing all of the health insurance bids. Um, we're we're going to see an increase on those as well. So we're doing what we can to, to bring that down. Uh, we will be having another facilities meeting to finalize a couple more projects for this summer. So we'll give you an update on that uh, probably next month. So uh, any questions? And finance committee members, feel free to add if I miss something. You did a good job, Michelle. All right, thank you. Okay, principal's report. Bill, would you like to start us out? Yeah, thank you, Alicia, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'll highlight a few items on our written report that you have in front of you. Um, we, uh, we've participated in um, our live sessions for Unit 1 of Letters Training. You can see um, elementary staff uh, had their live session on March 1st, and then the admin group last week on Tuesday, March 5th. I will uh, go down to the bottom. Um, MCAs will begin at Lakeside in mid-April and got some good news from uh, Minnesota Reading Corps that the, um, the tutor we have in place this year, Mr. Carlson, is returning next year and, and that's a real benefit to our kids and our staff. He is just uh, loved by all of us. If you look, look on the back, you know, we try to keep the, the title budget numbers current as we wait for that initial allocation. Um, the winter amendment was submitted and approved. Um, give me one more chance to say thank you, Donna, for all the, the help she had given on that. Down below, middle of the page, you can see um, an outline for our summer programs. Um, I won't read through those, but you can see we've got our, our general um, summer program at elementary, then extended school year for um, special education, and then camp kindergarten. Moving down, um, you, can, you can read those items under School Community Partnership. Um, we had Kindergarten Roundup last Thursday. 
You can see our registration numbers. Um, Kim is actively um, calling and emailing all of those families. So she's got 63 more to go who remain um, on, on, our, on our census data. And then finally acknowledging um, Bethany for her efforts with our readathon, and then elementary staff um, for Winterfest and I Love to Read for all the planning and implementation for that. So what, um, what questions do you have? Bill, for the caseload for special education, what is the current caseload um, roughly and what is the projection looking like so far for 2024, 2025? I can, I can give you um, general impressions. You know, in general, um, numbers are going up when we look at um, kids coming in to pre-K and then into kindergarten from pre-K and then students graduating. Um, we are, we're, we're sending, um, as we work on this, a large group of students from sixth grade to junior high high school. That's kind of a, a trend that, that we've noticed. Um, specific numbers yet to come. We're meeting next week, starting looking at placing kids ECSE to kindergarten and so on, and then we'll move, move up the line. Well, I got a question. On the, <clears throat> on the goal of embedding social and emotional learning within the academic instruction, so who is helping with that? What specific staff members are? Yeah, so you know that's something that Lakeside staff members are involved in, and then Carrie Glazer has taken the lead on that one. And, and that's hopefully we hire an SEL coordinator for next school year. We have that posted at this point in time. Um, it's for that, that special funding that the state has given us for that position. So our hope, knock on wood, is that we can find somebody for that position moving forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Matt? Good evening. I know we're on a little bit of a time constraint, so I'll go kind of quickly through some of the things I want to talk about. Um, just bringing attention to our ACT uh, is going to take place here in less than a month uh, on April 9th in the Purple Gym. That's been working very well. So thanks to Brittany Schmidt and Cheryl Templin for their work on that. Um, they'll also be our um, individuals that are um, proctoring the test that day as well. State testing is upon us. We are within the window. Uh, we will begin that here next week at, at the junior high school level. I spoke last meeting a little bit about how we're going to change the structure of that where they'll be testing in their, um, in their classrooms this time as opposed to being pulled out. Hopefully um, we see a little bit better engagement as well as a little bit less disruption to uh, the academic day for them um, if we can do it in their, their classrooms as opposed to being pulled. Prom is on April 27th. Uh, Grand March is going to be here at GSL in the Black Gym. Dinner and the Dance will be at the Glencoe City Center. And then our after prom activities will be taking place at the Chaska Community Center. The, the tickets are on sale now. The last day to purchase those tickets uh, would be March 22nd. So that's coming up here next week. Um, summer school letters are going to be going out to students and parents who qualify for that here in the coming weeks. Um, senior high is credit recovery, so it's based upon um, where they're at with passes and fails at the 9th or 11th level. Um, and then junior high is an enrichment program. And that's something that we work with our grade level teams to kind of identify who would, who would benefit from this, who should be coming in to kind of maintain uh, that routine throughout the summer. The dates are listed there below. Junior high will be July 8th through July 26th. They are looking at doing Monday through Friday. Whereas senior high will be kind of on two separate sessions where they break for the 4th of July. Um, June 10th through June 27th, and then again July 8th through July 18th, um, which would be Mondays through Thursdays. Um, under school and community partnership, we do have our blood drive coming up. It's our second of two blood drives. Uh, will be on April 12th. That typically is in the purple gym, um, but with the weather that we've been having, I'll have to monitor. I know uh, the, the Sometimes the heat gets too high in the purple gym and we may have to move that to the black gym. So if that's something um, the week before, if temps are looking too high, I'll work with, with Principal Butler and, and Josh Metcalf about kind of swapping gyms for the day. Um, and then acknowledgements, uh, our close-up trip just returned uh, from their Washington DC trip. So thank you, Mr. Lemke for again planning that. And then the last thing I wanna add because I didn't have it on there um, because it just happened today 
Um, I want to acknowledge and thank Dan Sabota for planning uh, one of the A&I trips. We went to MSU Mankato today with half of our eighth graders and then half of Hutchinson's eighth graders. Um, and I want to tell one very quick story that just kind of made the whole trip for me. Um, we, we went there, uh, we gathered as a whole group, so Hutchinson students, Glencoe students, um, there was a, a tour guide who kind of went through a whole uh, presentation with the students, um, and then they went on a campus tour, and they split up. There was probably about 15 students, both Glencoe and Hutchinson students mixed in each tour group, um, and they toured the campus. They came back together at the very end to kind of have some final words, and then they got to eat in the cafeteria at MSU Mankato. And before they went there, kind of just gave them a heads up. Hey, mind you, there's adults here that are eating. This is a college campus, 18 to probably 22 year olds or, or older here. Um, we can't have our typical junior high lunchroom behavior in a, in a cafeteria. And the students rose to that occasion. They were great. Um, Dan and I were sitting, eating at a table, and uh, there were three GSL students that were sitting there. Uh, they all got up to leave. Uh, one of them went to get ice cream and came back. The other two were waiting to leave. During that time, three college students sat down at that table. Um, when our eighth grade boy came back, he just sat down right at the table with the three college students. And uh, like that was no big deal. And the three college students there, I, I got a little nervous because I didn't know where this was gonna go. Um, welcomed him in, uh, asked him what his name was, uh, asked him what grade he was in, asked him why he was at Mankato, and proceeded to have about a 15 minute conversation where they just welcomed him into that table. And they were giving him advice about what junior high was like for them. They gave him advice about what to expect when he gets to high school. They talked about what his aspirations were for when he is done with school. And it, it was honestly probably one of the coolest things that I've seen this school year of just how welcoming that those individuals were. So. Um, that, that conversation kind of ended, it was time to get on the buses, and I made sure to go back and uh, visit with those three individuals. And uh, there were two juniors in college and one senior in college, and I just thanked them for what they did, and um, that, that meant a lot to me as a high school principal to see that um, we live in a, in a community and in, in an in a area and an environment where they're as inviting and welcoming as they were. So thanks, Dan, for planning that, and I wanted to share that story with you as the board as well. Thank you, Matt. Any questions? You know, Matt, that's, that's a, a great story. I like that a lot. I wonder if that would open the door, too, for the future as far as either alumni and or students that are alum that are, that are GSL alum that are currently in college to come back and have conversations even in our lunchroom here on campus with our juniors and our seniors. I'm glad that you said that because part two to that story, um, I was put in a specific group today, and I shouldn't say this publicly and in front of my board, but I'm going to. Um, I was put in a specific group today to follow a student to make sure that he, we didn't get lost. And as we were touring um, Armstrong Hall, uh, I was just walking through the halls, and all of a sudden I hear, Mr. Foss! And I look up, and it's a graduate from GSL of two years ago. And I ended up having a conversation with him, um, asked why we were here, and he is going into criminal justice. Um, he is somebody that came to GSL, I believe, as a 10th grader. So he did 10th, 11th, 12th at GSL, now in his second year at Mankato. Um, and he asked if there would ever be an opportunity to come back and speak to, to the school. And I said, Sam, I would love for that opportunity. When you are home, come into my office. Let's set this up. Um, unfortunately, I did lose the group I was in, so I texted Cole <laughs> Peterson and said, um, the one job I had, I have now failed, so I'm passing the baton to you. Um, but I'm glad you brought that up, Jamie, because I did actually run into a former graduate who asked that very question today. Good, thank you. That would be a very good idea. Mm -hmm. well, we've, had, we've had that. I think you know, Mr. Hafes has just had a recent graduate in his class here a couple, day, uh, a couple of days ago, and I know that there's been some other opportunities that, on a, in, on a class by class basis, that do happen. Um, he was an MSU Mankato graduate. And he was an MSU Mankato graduate as well. Mechanical engineering. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Carly, my daughter, has come actually in Tammy Sherman's class and done some <laughs> student teaching and, and was just actually here during her spring break, too, as well, and, and visited and was a mystery reader for her. And, stuff too so she enjoys coming to visit and being always fun to be a mystery reader right they don't have yeah. any questions do they <laughs> <laughs> so. yes okay
Okay. Um, any else? Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. We'll move on to approve the consent agenda. Um, this is enclosure number Alicia, one. Can I oh, I'm sorry. Oh, superintendent report. Yep, I always not, skip you. I know. <laughs> That's okay. Great. Right, well, there you go. Uh, well, I haven't done it in a long time, but for some I reason, know. I always want to uh, skip you. That's okay. Most of my stuff is on the agenda, but just a couple of things that are not on the agenda that we had talked about last month. Um, as you know, that the uh, solar um, petition or the solar uh, energy uh, application for that grant that we are pursuing, or at least we're looking at, um, I talked to Rich a little bit. Um, we, we just didn't seem like if we're really ready yet to make a decision on whether we're going to go through that. If you remember, it's for... Um, Lincoln Elementary and the high school, okay, not for, for Lakeside. And um, I asked if we could have another month on that uh, to see if there's any other questions or things like that to review. And he said that that would be not a problem in terms of timelines and, and things like that from their end. So um, that's not on the agenda, but it will be something that's going to be coming up. And so if you guys ever need any more information, um, I believe you have what he presented and, and things like that of, of being able to move forward with that. Or if we choose not to, or we do it at a later time, that's, that's fine as well. Um, but uh, uh, that's not on the agenda. The other thing is, is um, you know, Ken and I talked a little bit about the school calendar for the 25-26 school year. Okay? And I know that they're looking at a few other dates, and so that's going to be on the agenda for next month as well, once we get, get all that taken care of. So those two things are, are not on the agenda, but they will be on the agenda for, for next month. Um, in the big picture of our school planning process, we talked a little bit about um, that whole, whole piece. Um, last year, during the month of March, we had our presentation on the, on the school planning process. This year, there's not a lot of, of change to it, and so I just thought I would be able to update that. You know, we're, we're obviously replacing some of the retirements that we have, and, and fortunately, we um, have uh, filled a couple of those spots, and, um, or, or, and, and one of those spots was through the ULA process as well, uh, and so that is something that's happening. Um, and then uh, in terms of what potentially could happen for next year, there is an overload that we need to discuss here at the uh, in the uh, addendum. Next year, there's going to be a few overloads um, with the high school schedule, and, and we'll make sure that we talk a little bit about those once we get closer to the school year. But they're looking like, similar to this year, the EL uh, with the high school will be an overload. We also will be having a Spanish overload um, coming through, um, and that's going to be able to help complete the, the junior high schedule. And then the last one is a math overload with the high school. Um, and, and we discussed this at committee a little bit about having that opportunity for some high school kids that are planning on going to college that are not going through calculus. And this they'll, they'll be able to take a stats class and a math analysis class during their senior year. And those do a couple of other things, too, when we offer those. Um, and the reason why that needs to be an overload is because the Calc classes are at about, what is it, Matt, about 73, 74? Yeah, they're, they're hovering right at 70. So if we split them Seven. into two, it's going to be about 35 kids. So the, with the overload, they'll be in three sections. Okay, And so that's something that we also think is, is a good thing. Um, with the registration process, it looked the, the whole big picture looked like in, in 7th through 12th grade, it was about a reduction throughout the whole thing, about of a, a, a 1.0. Um, but of course, these overloads are going to be kind of used. And if you look at it like that, the, the FTE count is still going to be very similar to what it was last year, if not maybe just a little bit lower. Um, we will, of course, be updating you as we get closer to the, to the start of the school year, but wanted to just kind of give you that roundabout explanation a little bit about uh, the school plan. Uh, and then the elementary, uh, they're all going to be staying status quo, except for that fifth section will go from third grade to fourth grade. So that's the school plan. Um, reminder to our community that April 26th, because of our READ Act, just to kind of another one, we'll do this in April as well, but that'll be a half day. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be done at noon, and Lakeside will be done at about 1115. Um, and then my acknowledgments I already did, and so that's what I have. Okay. 
Thank you, Chris. Sorry. Nope, no problem. Um, any committee reports? Nope. Okay. Now I will move on to approve the consent agenda. That was in closure number one. Um, do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Jason to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Action item carries. Um, old business? None at this, this time. Um, new business? Action item A. The SWWC Service Cooperative um, Agreements for 2024-2025. The Glencoe Silver Lake School District utilizes several service provi services provided by the SWWC Service Cooperative. Um, the services um, recommend are below are recommended by administration. Um, Michelle, would you like to give us some details on them yes. before we move into a motion? Yeah, I will do that. Um, all the contracts. It always seems early that we have to approve these. The reason we have to approve these earlier is because the service cooperative has to follow the same timelines when it comes to any ULAs, terminations, because they, uh, because of their staffing. So that's why we always have to get it back to them so they can see what all the districts are doing, what decisions they're making, so then they can work on their staffing moving forward. So our services that we're recommending, again, for next year are... Um, just about the same as what we've currently had, and I'm not going to read all the numbers um, unless you have certain questions on them. Our enrollment projection, of course, is down, and that's based on the previous year enrollment, but then the services still go up a little bit based on their teacher contracts that they have to build into what they turn around and charge us for. So we have the Health and Safety Management Assistant contract, uh, the RMIC, which is our support for our MARS program, our payroll program, and our financial program. Uh, that's just up slightly. I'm going to come back to the technology in a minute. Uh, the student data privacy program is something we have to do through our tech, uh, technology side of things. Special ed, of course, is our big one always, and you can see that is quite a hefty increase. The two areas, as I've reached out to the co-op for some explanation and to our, our local director as well and working with the admin on their the two biggest areas that we've seen an increase on is our deaf of hard of hearing and our PT, our physical therapy area. And we're not increasing that many students in the deaf and hard of hearing. It's only going from 22, 23, we had two, and now we went to five. What's really changed in those areas is the number of direct minutes that are required for those uh, students. So we're seeing an increase, um, almost 200% cost increase in the deaf and hard of hearing, and in the PT about a 60% increase there, um, a change from seven students to 12 students, so not a lot of change in student count just in the direct minutes, so that's what's affecting our overall special ed. And then our behavior analysis that the elementary principals mostly use that person to come out when they need additional services. So overall the contract increases about a 25.8% which is another big hunk. We've had a big hunk increase the last couple of years from them, so we have to absorb that into our budget. The thing with these contracts, they are paid, um, most all of them are paid because they're related to special ed that comes out of our, uh, our federal special ed dollars, so that eats up a little bit more of those dollars that gives us less dollars locally to control how we want to use. So going back to the basic technology services, you'll see that uh, for next year we'll be at a zero dollars. And this kind of ties into our whole change from being part of LCTN, which you remember will be done as of June 30th. We're switching to Southwest West Central. Now this has been quite a lengthy process. Um, we did have to send in our, our commitment letter on that contract a little bit earlier because of E-rate. E -rate flows into this whole contract and it really um, makes things a little more uh, restringent as far as time restraints. They needed their commitment letters back from all the additional districts. At this time when we got our numbers, there's 51 districts that are part of the consortium as part of Southwest West Central that then they spread that back out to E-rate and those E-rate stuff has to go out um, earlier. So a lot of it is dictated by E-rate and the E-rate timelines and guidelines that we have to follow. So at this point, based on all 51 districts participating, we're looking at a cost after 
the telecommunication aids and the E-rate aids of about $20,000. So that is a savings um, from what we currently pay to LCTN. This year we paid $28,000 to LCTN for those services. The other piece that we're working on, uh, which we have to work through our contract with CenturyLink, we currently, we've had, because there was no way to connect Lakeside and the Glencoe campus, so we've had to have a special line through CenturyLink to connect the two buildings. It costs us about four thousand, between four and five thousand dollars a month for that line. Because of now going through the co-op and they're going to have those lines in place, we're going to be able to eliminate the cost of that line each month. So we're going to have an additional savings. We still have to work out contract details with CenturyLink. Jeff is meeting with them, I think, tomorrow to see how that looks, because we do have a three-year agreement with them. But right now, they kind of un are understanding um, the situation of LCTN no longer in place. We don't need their extra line service. So a number of things we have to work out um, on that piece of it. But I anticipate that we're going to see at least um, an additional savings on part of that line that we've had before until that contract is up. So because of we're now part of um, this whole consortium for the wide area network, we don't have to pay that basic technology services fee anymore. So that's why you're seeing a zero dollars instead of the 2200 that we paid last year. So an additional savings there as well. So I think things are slowly starting to fall into place. Uh, it's been a lot of work for um, Southwest West Central, taking on all these additional districts in the middle of trying to do E-rate and um, all the bare forms that required for E-rate. So, um, I would recommend that we approve the contracts as presented so we can um, let the service cooperative know that we, at this time we don't want to drop any services. We always kind of look real closely, um, and Chris and I both visit with Clark quite a bit when it comes to PT, OT, some of those services. Um, there's not a lot of those people out there, for one thing. The um, co-op itself has struggled to fill a lot of their special ed positions, their directors, their teachers. Um, their teachers at their, their level four building sites. There's just kind of a shortage of all those areas. Um, so we, you know, we always kind of look, can we provide an OT or a PT person in-house like we did a number of years ago. We went and we dropped our speech person with the co-op and hired our own speech person because we knew we could fill that. PT and OT are just tricky because do you have you know, enough for a full-time to keep a full-time person busy? Um, same as kind of like the hospitals have to deal with as well in that scheduling. So I think for right now this is probably our best direction um, until we see some bigger changes in some of our numbers. So special ed continues to grow. It's continue a, um, continue a costly program that we have to provide. So okay. questions? Michelle, you mentioned, you know, what the acronym SWWC, the Southwest West Central uh, Cooperative. The one that dissolved, can you just say what those letters, the, the Little Crow, can you the, mention what yep, that LCTN acronym LCTN meant? was a Little Crow Telecommunications Network. Yeah, thanks. And you've Sorry. mentioned it in previous meetings, but yeah. just for the general yep. public and stuff, yep. that acronym, it's kind yep. of once again something we We have a lot of acronyms education. and we kind of get used to it and forget to expand yeah. on that sometimes. In education, so. that's kind of what we're known for is acronyms. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And Clark has been a part of that um, LCTN board, so we yeah, appreciate it. I've been the chair of that board, but we haven't been actively meeting here um, this year. Yeah. So we appreciate change. you um, serving on that, Clark, and helping us through this whole <laughs> end, coming to end of LCTN. Okay. Do I have a motion? So do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Clark and a second by Donna to contract with SWWC Service Cooperative for the services as listed above for the 2024-2025 school year. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Action item carries. Action item B, uh, Achievement and Integration 2024-2025 Budget. Um, Superintendent Sanju recommends approving the 2024-2025 Achievement and Integration ANI Budget. The three-year ANI plan was approved in May of 2023. 
for July 1, 2023 to June 30th, 2026. The total proposed budget was $100,095.72. Uh, do I have a motion? I have a motion by Jamie. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a second by Donna. Any questions or comments? Um, Mr. Sabota isn't here tonight, so he was putting Mr. Foss on um, standby. Did he, did he tell you you were going to report? Always ready. Okay. Well, as uh, Mr. Foss shared, you know, one of the stories today, that was part of the integration, the ANI um, plan. And the plan, like uh, Alicia read, was approved last year, so we're not approving the whole plan. Not a lot of changes. We want to kind of keep the same format, and Matt can probably uh, um, address that a little bit more. I helped with Dan on the budget. A little bit of a decrease in the budget. We're finding um, some of the trips that he had planned didn't really have a cost other than okay. transportation, so we kind of lowered some of those entry fees. So he is, um, and you don't have to list exactly what trips you're going to do next year. Just, you know, we allocate so much <coughs> money for um, trips and transportation, and it will once again be uh, shared with Hutchinson. So that's um, that's the direction we're going. Matt, anything that he mentioned as far as plan, other plan changes? No, I don't think so. No, I think it'll be mostly Dan and his his piece working with students and in integration, and then the paraprofessional that helps at Lakeside working with some of those integration pieces. So. Well, and okay. We talked a little bit too about that, the numbers, if you remember from last year, the numbers, we had the discrepancy um, and, and, and this year those numbers would not have qualified GSL as an A&I school. If you remember last year, we got on that right away. They give you a whole year to plan if you choose to. But then, of course, you have to bank on the fact that your numbers are going to also still qualify you. And um, those numbers did not. But because we jumped and we acted upon it last year, we're good for that three-year three plan. Okay. So it was a good thing. So like this trip today you know, wouldn't have happened if, if we wouldn't have acted on it. So okay. um, it's a and, good thing. And like today's trip, the only cost was covering the, the lunches. Mm -hmm. And then the transportation, so it was no But the cost. transportation comes out of a different bucket. Yeah, that right? we called that to transportation, right. but um, that was the cost. But otherwise, you know, not like going to children's theater or something mm -hmm. where they have to buy their ticket, ticket. But otherwise, going to the U or Mankato State, there's no entry fee, per se. So. Okay. Dan's done a good job of organizing it and um, really learning about the program and what things we can do to help our kids. So. Kudos to Dan on that for taking it over. Which transportation service do we use when we're together with Hutchinson? I, mean, I understand the funding piece is yep. different, but just yep. who do we serve or who do we contract with for those? We use 4.0 transportation for Hutchinson. They do their own, so they just meet there okay. because they have their own A and I budget. Yeah. So we will buy like when they've gone to a couple of the things where we've had to buy tickets. GSL, we just keep it simple. We purchase, you know, 200 tickets or whatever we need for both schools, and then I invoice Hutchinson. Okay. Um, and same today for the lunches. We paid for them all. I just sent the invoice to Hutchinson, and then they reimburse us for that. But their transportation is on, our, on their own, and it's part of their A&I budget. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And it was Hutchinson bus service. I got the three buses. Okay. <laughs> just a few, huh? I have a motion by Jamie and a second by Donna to approve the 2024-2025 Achievement and Integration Budget for $100,095.72. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Action item carries. Action item C, proposal to rescind policy 491. It is the recommendation of the policy committee to rescind the following policy. Um, policy 491, mandatory COVID-19 vaccination or testing um, and face coverings. So um, do I have a motion? I have a motion by John. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a second by Donna. Any questions or comments? 
just MSBA does not have yeah. this policy anymore, and so in order to I officially uh, remove, remove it, it, you have to have board action to do that. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, motion by John, second by Donna to rescind policy 491, mandatory COVID-19 vaccination or testing and face coverings. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, action item carries. Uh, action item D, first reading of policies. It is the recommendation of the policy committee to bring back uh, the following policies for adoption at the next school board meeting. Policy 101, legal status of the school district. Uh, 203.2, order of regular school board meeting. 501, school weapons policy. 518, DNR, DNI orders. 522, Title nine, <laughs> sex non-discrimination policy, grievance procedures and process. 523, policies incorporated by reference. 526, hazing prohibition. 623, mandatory summer school instruction. And 720, vending machines. Do I have a motion? Jason, do I have a second? second. And a second by clerk. All those in favor, please signify, whoops, motion by Jason, second by Clark, to bring back the policies listed above for adoption at the next school board meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign, action item carries. Um, action item E, second reading of the policies. The following policies received their first reading at the February 12th board meeting. It is the recommendation of the policy committee, directors Lemke and Luckhart, and the superintendent of schools to a adopt the policies as listed below. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Jason. So a motion by myself, a second by Jason to adopt the policies as listed above. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, action item carries. Um, action item F, approved teacher overload. High School Principal Foss requests approval of overload for trimester two during the 2023-2024 school year um, for Wanda Collins for English. Do I have a motion? So I have a motion by Clark and a second by John to approve the trimester two overload. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign, action item carries. Action item G, additional baseball coach. Activities Director Schwartz requests approval of hiring an additional seventh and eighth grade baseball coach for the 2023-2024 baseball season due to the number of students that have signed up. Su Superintendent Sanju recommends this approval. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Jason. Do I have a second? <clears throat> I'll make that second. Any questions or comments? So just real quick, he, he's at 36, 37, and I think there's still another week left in seventh and eighth grade. And so the additional coach, one of the ideas is, is that when they go on the road trip, they won't necessarily take everybody because of playing time, and then they'll have an opportunity to have a coach that stays back and does you know, scrimmages and practice and that kind of stuff. And so that's where he's thinking about being able to, to do that. And when you go on the road trip, if you're taking all those kids with just two coaches, it gets to be a lot. If they ever do get a, to take everybody, having that third body there is, is something that's also um, a good thing. Okay. Uh, motion by Jason, a second by myself to approve the hiring of an additional seventh and eighth grade coach for the 2023-2024 baseball season. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oppo uh, opposed, same sign. Action item carries. And if you're now interested, please apply. <laughs> apply. <laughs> um, action item H, miscellaneous. Alicia, None at this time. Alicia, can oh. I mention one thing that I forgot earlier? Yeah, sure. I wanted to acknowledge Trisha. <laughs> As um, most of you know now, Trisha has is filling the spot that was left by Donna Hammers. We kind of combined those positions, so we're still working through job duties um, and job title. We, we, hers is kind of getting longer, so we're trying to figure out um, how to summarize that, so you'll be getting an update job description 
and, um, and she'll have a title, whatever that might be. So she's really picked up um, very quickly. It was nice to have Donna to be able to train her in before Donna retired. Um, so we'll just kind of work through that and kind of shuffle things around. And between her and Pam and Lori and Tricia, we'll, we'll keep things running. So that's where we're at on that. So thanks to Tricia. Thank you all in the district office for all you guys do in there. Okay. Uh, adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh -huh. I have a motion by Jamie. Do I have a second? Oh, and a second by Clark to adjourn at 5.45 p.m. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye.